I only have 12 bullets, so you're gonna have to share. Let's count them down. Bad Deadpool. Seven. Good Deadpool. Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and today we'll be taking a look at Deadpool's origins and powers as featured in Marvel Comics. Deadpool, formerly known as Wade Winston Wilson, is a fictional character created by Fabian Nichesa and Rob Liefeld, first appearing in the New Mutants issue number 98. Initially, Deadpool was depicted as a supervillain when he made his first appearance in the New Mutants and later in issues of X-Force, but later evolved into his more recognisable anti-heroic persona. The character is known as the Merc with a Mouth because of his tendency to joke constantly, including his proclivity for breaking the fourth wall, a literary device used by his writers for humorous effect and running gags. What we'll come to see is that Wade Wilson is a deeply tortured individual and a victim of circumstance who turned to humour to cope with all that had happened to him. His humour and unpredictability was also a sign that Wade Wilson was mentally unstable, something that we'll come to see from the conflicting accounts of his childhood. Wade once recalled that his father abandoned his mother while she was pregnant with him and that she took out her anger on him. He later recalled that his mother died when he was five and that his father, an army officer, became abusive, causing Wade to grow up to be a thug. At the same time, the unreliable narrator also told a writer that his father was a teller of bad jokes who abandoned him and his mother while he was still a boy. His mother then turned to humour, alcohol and home shopping networks as a coping mechanism and the young Wade ran away from home so that his mother wouldn't need to spend what little money she had left on him. This is all revealed to be another lie as it was eventually revealed that his parents were still together and living in Canada. The pair had also kept Wade's room as he had left it, but Wade himself did not recognise the house, his parents or his room when he returned there as an adult. After many years of training, Deadpool had become an extraordinary martial artist, hand-to-hand -hand combatant and a master in multiple unarmed combat techniques. He's been shown engaging skilled fighters like Wolverine and Taskmaster and has even defeated them in hand-to-hand -hand combat on a number of occasions. This essentially shows that Deadpool is among one of the most skilled fighters in the Marvel Universe and coupled with his unpredictability, he was a force to be reckoned with. As mentioned just before, it's difficult for anyone to know what Deadpool will do at any given moment given that he himself barely knows what he'll do at any given time. Taskmaster, whose abilities allowed him to analyse and copy the fighting style of others, once believed that he knew how to engage Deadpool. But Deadpool proved him wrong by completely changing his fighting style on a whim, throwing off Taskmaster's abilities. After leaving home, he joined the US Army Special Forces, but despite his superior skills, he was drummed out for not following orders that conflicted with his moral code. After a failed suicide attempt just before his 19th birthday, Wade was invited to join a clandestine group of CIA-sponsored mercenary assassins, where he was assured that his targets would all deserve death. While fighting in the secret unit, Deadpool was able to refine his assassination techniques and espionage methods, which allowed him to become a master infiltrator, escape artist, and marksman. He also developed complete mastery over the use of bladed weapons, and is frequently seen carrying two swords strapped to his back. In the comics, Wade is able to charge his katana swords with an energy field through his suit, which increased their durability and cutting power to the point that they could cut through objects as hard as diamonds. Bring it on one night, Willie. Oh! Yeah! Your bullets! They're really fast! Now, very little is known of Wilson's subsequent activities with the clandestine group, but during one of his latter assassination missions in Japan, Wilson refused to complete his assignment, allegedly the first time he had ever done so, after which he relocated to the US. In America, Wade met and fell in love with mutant teenage prostitute Vanessa Carlyle, with whom he shared dreams of a better life, and we of course see this relationship develop in both Deadpool films, though there is no mention of her mutant ability. This of course did not last long and Wade soon discovered that he had developed 34 inoperable cancerous tumours, leading him to break up with Vanessa rather than force her to remain with a terminally ill man. Back in Canada, he was offered hope in the form of Department K, a special weapons development branch of the Canadian government. Wilson became a test subject in Department K's branch of the joint US-Canadian Superhuman Enhanced Project, commonly known as the Weapon X program, and his cancer was temporarily arrested via the implantation of a healing factor derived from another Department K agent, the mutant adventurer and my favourite X-Man, Wolverine. 
I think it should also be noted that Vanessa herself was later affiliated with the project after having manifested mutant shapeshifting abilities, after which she began calling herself Copycat. After several successful missions, his healing factor began to destabilize, bringing his cancer back from remission, which in turn caused deformities in his flesh. As a result, he was rejected from the Weapon X program and sent to the hospice, allegedly a government facility where failed superhuman operatives were treated. However, unknown to the Canadian government, the patients there served as experimental subjects for Dr. Kilbrew and his sadistic assistant Ajax, who was featured in the first Deadpool movie. Both Kilbrew and Ajax subjected Wilson and the other patients to various torturous experiments out of a mixture of both professional curiosity and the deranged satisfaction it gave them. Knowing that they would all likely not make it out alive, the patients within the hospice began placing bets in a Deadpool as to how long each subject would live. And this is another plot point seen in the film, although it was slightly changed. In due course, Wilson formed a romantic relationship with the cosmic entity Death who regarded him as a kindred spirit. Wilson started trying to kill himself to join Death, going so far as to start taunting Ajax by saying his real name, Francis, over and over, which earned him the respect of the other patients. In response to this, the furious Ajax lobotomized Worm, the closest thing Wilson had to a friend, and after being prompted by Death, Wilson killed Worm to end his suffering. Under Kilbrew's hospice rules, any patient who killed another was to be executed, and Ajax subsequently tore out Wilson's heart and left him for dead. But Wilson's thirst for vengeance was so strong that it jump-started his healing factor, regenerating his heart, although it did nothing to cure the scars on his body. Wilson then escaped the room and attacked the guards, making his way to Ajax, where he shot him in the chest with two automatic rifles. Adopting the name Deadpool, Wade then escaped from the hospice along with a handful of liberated patients, where he began making a name for himself as the Merc with a Mouth. <laughs> you're, you're about to be killed by a Zamboni! Nice to see you, Jared. I'll take a foot long. Fully loaded. Deadpool essentially had his physiology enhanced on a genetic level, which gave him regenerative healing, foreign chemical resistance, disease immunity, telepathic immunity, possession resistance, and immortality, along with a whole list of superhuman abilities, including superhuman strength, speed, stamina, agility, reflexes, and durability. As mentioned earlier, Deadpool's superhuman healing factor was derived from the blood of Wolverine, and this allowed him to regenerate damaged or destroyed bodily tissue with far greater speed and efficiency than an ordinary human. As a result, Deadpool was able to heal from injuries such as slashes, punctures, bullet wounds, beheadings, and severe burns within moments. His healing abilities rendered his brain unreadable to telepaths, but its constant healing also made him highly unstable and prone to violent outbursts. Yes, he was already unstable prior to the genetic augmentation as we discussed earlier, but the constant scarring and healing of brain tissue was believed to have made his condition worse. Great. I'm stuck in an elevator with five guys on a high protein diet. Oh, wait. Dreams really do come true. So just shut it. You're up next. Thank you, sir. You look really nice today. It's the green. Brings out the seriousness in your eyes. We actually got our first on-screen glimpse of Deadpool in X-Men Origins Wolverine, which coincidentally also starred Ryan Reynolds. However, the filmmakers made the awful decision of sewing his mouth shut and giving him the powers of Cyclops. What the? Now, I must stress that what we see in this film is not Deadpool, and Ryan Reynolds was so disappointed with what had happened to the character that it inspired him to push for a solo Deadpool movie that did the character justice. And in a way, I'm sort of glad we had X-Men Origins Wolverine, as it's actually the reason we now have an outstanding solo Deadpool series in the first place. And it also paved the way for the satisfying way the character erased the film from continuity, by going back in time and killing his counterpart. Well, that's all for today, folks. Thanks to all of you guys who requested we take a look at Deadpool's history and origins in the comics. I've been thinking about doing a video exploring Cable and Wolverine down the track, so please let me know if this is something you'd like to see in the comments below. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notification icon to stay up to date on all my content. And if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. Oh! Oh, hello. I know, right? Whose balls did I have to fondle to get my very own movie? I can't tell you, but it does rhyme with Pulverine. Maximum effort. Cop shot! Oh, I'm looking for Francis! Have you seen this man? Oh, ow, ow. Cooler weather.